ranking Democrat in the House, Minority Whip, Congressman Steny Hoyer of Maryland. First, sir, let me congratulate you on last week's re-election, your 17th term. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Thank you very much, Tamron. So as you heard, there are a lot of action in the Senate for Democrats, including the possibility of adding Elizabeth Warren to a leadership uh, position there. But you in the House have your own uh, drama and headlines that we're sure, sure to hear, including um, you and many House Democrats wanting the president to take executive action as it relates to immigration and uh, really, in a sense, ignore threats from Republicans. Well, I don't think we ought to ignore uh, Republicans at all. Uh, they're in the majority both in the Senate and the House and the next Congress, and uh, uh, they're a very important player. And the president, as Mitch McConnell has indicated, is a very important player. And we Democrats are going to participate. What I've urged is the president said he was going to take action. Uh, the Senate passed a bipartisan comprehensive immigration bill. Uh, everybody in the Congress and most people in the country understand that the immigration system is broken and needs to be fixed. Uh, my own view, Chairman, is if the president acts, uh, that will give incentive, frankly, uh, to the House of Representatives to either take up the Senate bill, uh, put its own bill on the floor, and take action to establish immigration reform by law, not by executive order. Uh, but executive orders are not unusual. Mm -hmm. uh, Ronald Reagan, uh, George Bush the first, George Bush the second, uh, Bill Clinton passed executive orders, many of them dealing with uh, questions of immigration. So this is not unusual, but hopefully uh, that will be temporary and that we will then consider uh, a statute, uh, agree on it in a bipartisan way, have it pass the House and the Senate, send it to the President, and, uh, and uh, have it in a fashion in which the President can sign. That's what the American people want us to do, work together to solve problems. Uh, and and I, I certainly know um, that to be the case, I did our exit polling and we heard um, that from voters throughout this country. With that said, and perhaps I used the wrong description of ignoring Republicans as it relates to executive action, but you have House Speaker John Boehner saying that and sought executive action that essentially it was poisoning the well and it's playing with matches and likely to get burned. Um, if you are encouraging the president to take executive action, counter that to Speaker Boehner's words, that does not mean compromise. Look, I think that uh, each party is going to do things that the other party doesn't like. Mm -hmm. What I've urged uh, Speaker Boehner and I would urge my own colleagues uh, to do is not to allow the things on which we don't agree to do to undermine those items on which we can agree. In, in this instance, I understand what the Speaker and, and uh, Senator McConnell have said, that it would be better uh, not to create what they perceive as some sort of confrontation. But the President has said uh, for, uh, frankly, over six months, this is what he was going to do. This does not come as a surprise to anybody. And in any event, whatever he does can be uh, a temporary uh, stopgap uh, to try to solve some of the problems that exist while the Republican majority in the House and the Senate uh, and participating with Democrats comes up with a bipartisan uh, agreement as the Senate has already done some 18 months ago. So, Tamron, I think that uh, I hear that rhetoric, but on neither side uh, should we allow a disagreement on one issue to right. undermine our ability to come to an agreement on other issues. And just quickly here, we were talking about Senate leadership, Democratic Senate leadership. Um, what about the House here? The Senate has felt a reason to bring in, as it was described, new blood, a progressive voice. There have been reports regarding Minority Leader um, Pelosi and concerns whether or not that is the right leadership for Democrats in the House. What do you say? Look, I think this was a, uh, an election uh, which demonstrated, I think, the Americans' frustration and anger that the Congress is in gridlock and is not working. That's the solution. I don't think that the uh, members believe it was the leadership per se, mm -hmm. although clearly uh, the, the obstructionism uh, that the president was confronted with uh, was very uh, undermining of the public's confidence, and we need to move beyond that. But I, but I think uh, the leadership yeah. is not being held responsible yeah. for that on the Democratic side. And, sir, we just got breaking news in. There, there's been confirmation that Senator Elizabeth Warren will have a leadership role in acting as a liaison, uh, for lack of a better description, for uh, 
uh, progressives being a prominent progressive in the party. Again, going back to the need for fresh blood, will there be pressure for House Democrats to make a similar move, uh, given that her progressive message um, certainly stuck where is the message that we heard largely from Democrats running um, for re-election did not stick. Look, I think Elizabeth Warren has a very strong voice. Uh, obviously, the Senate uh, Democrats decided they wanted to include her uh, in the circle uh, so that that voice was heard. Of course, they meet for lunch uh, with all the senators included. In our own party, we have a very diverse leadership, as you know, mm -hmm. uh, in the House leadership right now. Nancy Pelosi, a first woman speaker in history. Uh, Jim Clyburn, the assistant leader, African-American, former chairman of the Black Caucus. Uh, Javier Becerra. Hispanic. Right. Uh, so we have progressive voices, we have moderate voices, we have uh, the spectrum of the party represented in the leadership uh, right now. So I think uh, uh, voices are being heard uh, and we'll move forward with that. Congressman Stenny Hoyer, it's always a great pleasure to have you on, sir, with us. Thank you again. Thank you, Chairman.